Sculpting natural fiber art dolls, or the more widely known Waldorf inspired dolls, is still a very recent thing. Back in 2008, when I started creating dolls, nobody to my knowledge was needle felting faces, adding the many details and expressions we see nowadays, or even using wefts for the doll's hair. Now the world in our doll making niche, using natural fibers, has expanded quite a lot and we are blessed with information in the shape of tutorials, classes, workshops and whatnots, even just the mere chance at checking what everyone else is up to via social media. So, if you want to know more about sculpting dolls in wool, using needle felting and soft sculpture techniques, this video is for you. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Fabiola and I am a passionate doll maker exploring my creative spirit through the wonderful art of doll making. I like to create dolls inspired by simplicity. I love dolls that tell a story, not just literally as I write it, but with their clothes, photography and expression. It is that expression which I craft with wool batting and felting needles, the subject of today's video. Normally, when you create a Waldorf inspired doll, you roll a very firm ball of wool using roving or wool batting. You wrap it in softer layers of wool to create the spine or neck of your doll and then you enclose the wool head inside a piece of a very stretchy material. Traditionally, stockinette, more commonly used now, is cotton gauze. You end up with a ball with some hanging wool. The hanging wool will become, depending on your choice of pattern and size of doll, inside the torso of your doll. It will act as a muff or if you sculpt it as the strong spine of your doll. Now you need to proceed to needle sculpt the head via compacting the soft added layers into the shape of a human skull while also dividing the face for the cheeks. Traditionally, you sculpt the eye line or cheek line, the nose and even the chin using needle sculpting. What is needle sculpting? Needle sculpting is a soft sculpture technique in which you use a long needle and strong craft thread to shape the soft material into the form or structure you're after. For example, you can make little button noses, sculpt cheek dimples, shape a ball into a more pretty skull shape, etc. All without having to use felting needles. This technique works well if you're making dolls for children as they're softer than art dolls. The wool does compact over time and the doll loses some definition but it is a very gentle material, especially appropriate for children's dolls. Now, if you want increasingly defined features, a longer lasting expression, or you're after more artistic expansion in your doll making, in that case, we use needle felting. In using needle felting, you will compact the wool via continued tangling of the wool fibers by using special barbed needles. This, of course, is a lengthy process, one that can be frushed with the added difficulty of achieving symmetry when you're using very small and soft amounts of wool. But do not despair, like everything else in life, is a skill and a technique you can master. Practice makes perfect, as they say. Now that you know the difference between needle sculpting and needle felting in regards to sculpting doll faces, how do you go about it? The easier place to start, in my opinion, is to create the more traditional Waldorf inspired doll head and then add wool on top of this and begin creating your doll's features. This is easiest to begin with because the overall shape of the head will help you define the areas to add wool and it will make things clearer for you. This is the way I decided to start teaching others how to sculpt all faces with needle felting. 
We start by first making a very strong core head using the gauze to create a spine and then adding wool on top of that to create the defining facial features. You can check out a little introductory video about that class here in this channel or visit my online class at this address. Once you have some experience felting doll faces to achieve symmetry, evenness and high quality in your felting technique, then maybe you won't need to use the stocking net anymore, though I think that using it for learning how to sculpt a different head is still very helpful. When you feel more advanced in your technique and you want to explore either different expressions, more realism, or give your dolls different ages, then you can check out this other class which explores the magic of felting a baby doll face with closed eyelids. I've already shared in this YouTube channel how to create a Waldorf inspired doll head using mainly needle sculpting techniques, which you can check out in this video of the Hansel and Gretel doll making series. That series not only teaches you the correct way to roll a core head, but also how to cover it in cotton gauze, how to needle sculpt it, and how to make a little doll nose. I've also shared more advanced tips for needle felting doll faces, such as dividing the face in quarters to keep symmetry, rolling some of the wool to start with, and begin felting with slightly firmer bits for certain features, marking where everything goes so you can see the space between nose, chin, lips, etc. I've also shared how to add a more realistic nose with pretty nostrils and even how to sculpt a gentle smile on one of your dolls. So don't feel discouraged if at the moment you can't take a class or purchase one of my doll patterns. I am sure the content that is already shared here with you will be of some assistance. In other news, I want to share that I'm currently in Europe on a three month long adventure with my family. I decided to teach two sculpting workshops in person. This is not something I do very often, but you're welcome to come if you would like a more hands-on approach on how to needle felt and sculpt our doll faces. I will be teaching two workshops, one in Granada, Spain on the 10th and 11th of April two whole days exploring the magic of creating doll faces with wool, and another workshop on the 1st and 2nd of June in Porto, Portugal. If you want more information about the registration process, the tools, materials, and pricing, there's a direct link to satisfy your questions in the video description box, or ask me via the comments and I'll try my best to reply promptly. I hope this video clarifies some of the basic doubts in regards to where to start sculpting doll faces and how to proceed with your learning journey once you have a few boards under your feet. The rest will be up to you as you keep exploring your techniques and your creative spirit. See you soon!